This Bears franchise is officially cursed when it comes to the head coaching position. Bears fall to the Packers 20 to 19 after a blocked field goal. Bears have lost 11 in a row to the Green Bay Packers, and overall, the Bears have not beat them since the 2010s. The head coaching decisions of the Chicago Bears franchise continues to kill this team. Even though there were a lot of positives, it wasn't from the head coach, and I'm going to break that all down for you guys right now. And I want to hear your guys' frustrations because I am feeling you guys, and I want to hear what you guys think. But hello, everyone, and welcome back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago Bears. My name is Nick Brody, and as always, thank you for tuning in. Now, before I begin today's show, hit that like button if you want change to come to the Chicago Bears, along with commenting how you're feeling about this team at the moment after this heartbreaking loss and what change you want to see. And are you a Bears fan? Hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all Chicago Bears news and notifications. So let's just jump into it. The Chicago Bears fall to the Green Bay Packers 20 to 19 in week 11. The Bears first NFC North game this year, and they put a doozy on themselves at home. We lost on a field goal that was blocked in the final seconds of the game. The Bears could have gotten closer, put in Cairo Santos in a range. They could have scored more points earlier in the game. So many bad coaching decisions, especially with how this team played on both sides of the ball. I don't know how we lost this game. This Bears defense played really well. One red zone turnover. Shout out to Terrell Smith for the nice interception. Under 370 yards of total offense allowed to the number three offense in the NFL at the moment in Green Bay. They sacked Jordan Love one time. The Packers were one for five on third down. That's a big one right there. They're 0 for 1 on fourth down. That's another big one right there. And they forced Green Bay to only have 17 passes along with not allowing the hottest running back in the NFL and Josh Jacobs to have more than 75 yards in this game. And that's with missing Andrew Billings. I'll get more into the positives in a little bit. But on top of that, too, the Bears offense, 391 total yards of offense, 9 for 16 on third down, their best third down percentage all season, 3 for 3 on fourth down. Caleb Williams, over 300 total yards of offense, showing that this kid and Thomas Brown are working and are a thing. And I want to see this again with some slight adjustments against the Minnesota Vikings, where I'll get into it a little bit. But you're probably thinking to yourself, Nick, how the heck did we lose this game with we playing that well? Because there's a man named Matt Eberflus leading this team, and that is exactly what is wrong with the Chicago Bears franchise. Matt Eberflus, now 11-12 and 12 at home, losing two in a row at home. He's now lost four in a row. He's 14-30 and 30 all time. Bad choices on a defensive game plan at the end of the game cost the Chicago Bears with soft zone coverage. I'll get into that in a minute. Horrible clock management. The Bears had 36 seconds left on the clock. Could have gotten closer for Cairo Santos, who doesn't have a long leg. And on top of it, too, it was a 45-yard kick. I appreciate the confidence in Flus, but he has confidence in the worst situations. You don't have Robbie Gold out there. You could have gotten more yards. You could have made better play decisions. You could have had a better defensive call that was working in the game, and you didn't have to go away with it. But because of your incompetent decisions and how you think as a head coach cost this game. Matt Eberflus can't win in the NFL as a head coach. He's got to go. The McCaskies need to finally fire this guy and get things going sooner than later. But at this point, they're not going to fire him in the middle of the season. I'd be shocked if they did. But overall, very, very frustrating standpoint for the Chicago Bears. And what went wrong? Well, let's break down Matt Eberflus's mistake. Why the heck did we not go for a few more yards when we had timeout and 36 seconds left on the clock? Santos' leg is accurate, but it's not deep like others. And guess what? All we needed was one more yard to get over the goalpost in order to win this game. But with a slight tip and being 45 yards out, Santos couldn't get the job done. Number two, we played soft zone coverage at the end of the game. Man-to-man -man over 70% of the time. Bears defense wasn't allowing anything to Jordan Love in this Packers offense. They clearly weren't able to do anything. That's 15 of the last 16 games with less than 21 allowed. And guess what? They score in the fourth quarter. That's what kills this team, and that's what makes us between a okay ball club and a good ball club. But soft zone coverage doesn't work, especially when you have this talented of a defensive back group as the Chicago Bears do. It makes zero sense to me. And finally, plain and simple, Matt Eberflus was out coached by Matt LaFleur, a much better coach. That's why he's won 11 games in a row against us. You beat the Green Bay Packers when you're the Chicago Bears. Along with that, too, he knows the situation. He knows what he has. He knows his personnel. And that is why he lost this game. 
I mean, won this game. Matt Eberflus lost this game because he did the complete opposite of that. And that is exactly what is wrong with this Bears team right now. And there are a lot of positives that I'm going to hit on, which I'm excited to see because it was a big progression, but I don't give Matt Eberflus any credit for it. Now, before I do get into the positives of today's game, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Odds Jam, which just isn't another betting app. It's turning the entire system in your favor, and here's how it works. Odds Jam uses a, a strategy called arbitrage, finding odds across different playbooks. You bet on both sides. No matter the outcome, you will profit. Example, if you put $500 on the Bears one game and you put uh, 335 on another game, it looks at your odds, and you're able to help win no matter what. You can guarantee that you're going to get a win here and there, and they look at the best sportsbook odds for you across the board. And if you go to the link in the description now and use code J-A-Y-C-H-I, you get 35% off your, your monthly membership along with a seven-day free trial. I guarantee you'll be profiting after this trial. And if you don't, cancel in one click, no questions asked. Now, what went right? Because honestly, guys, I got to go through a little rant right here. The offense did 10 times better than expected. 391 total yards of offense against a top 12 defense. Thumbs up right there. Kill Williams over 300 total yards with no turnovers. Thumbs up there. Swift with over five yards of carrying and a touchdown. Using Rashawn Johnson effectively along with Doug Kramer as your fullback in a situation on the goal line, getting a touchdown. Bang, you got it. Cole Komet with over 14 yards per catch. DJ Moore with seven receptions. Keenan Allen with a 10.2 yard per catch average. Rome and Con Caleb Connection getting stronger and stronger. Only three sacks allowed against a tough defensive line. Only two punts today. Again, your best three third down percentage, nine and 16. Best of the season so far. And three for three on fourth down. Thomas Brown, what a job you did, my man. You walked in here. The energy was great. You were sitting in the box, seeing the field correctly, and that is exactly why you were able to get the job done. Along with it, Caleb Williams is saying he was in my ear giving me a play after every single play ready to go. Thomas Brown walked up to the situation and was ready to win the Bears this game, but Matt Eberflus' decisions cost him big time. This defense did a good job, though. Eric Washington, shout out to him for this. In a game we were supposed to get crushed by, Packers were 1-5 and five on third down, their worst of the season. 0-1 on fourth down. Obviously, that's not good. Key turnover in the red zone. Kept the top three running back in Josh Jacobs under 75 yards without Andrew Billings, and they were a top five, three rushing offense entering this game. And they kept one of the best offensive football under 21 points. That's four, 15 of the last 16, which is insanely impressive. So overall, this team did a fantastic job and played a hard ball game today because honestly, it was more entertaining to watch than anything we've seen over the last couple of weeks. And guys, quickly, Caleb Williams is not a bust. Over 2,000 yards passing this year. That's pretty darn good for a rookie. He still has time to get more. On top of it too, today, 23 for 31 with 74% completion percentage, 231 passing yards, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions, 70 rushing yards. He made good decisions taking the ball himself and getting first downs, tearing up that Packers defense. I loved it. Played so well today. This offense in one game with Thomas Brown already looks 10 times better. Imagine how good this team would have been the rest of the season if we had Thomas Brown the whole time. I love what I saw out of this. And no turnovers in the last four games for this Bears offense, spreading the ball out to all different wide receivers. Six total targets in this game alone today. I don't think I can pound the table enough for how good Caleb Williams has been so far. And I'm very, very happy with the direction they're going. A loss is a loss, but progression is progression. I just got to say this, FGB. Seriously, they crushed the souls of Chicago. The city is down bad right now. But overall, guys, throw it in the chat if you haven't already either. I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. Are you feeling better after I brought up all the positives? Are you feeling exactly the same? Let's hear those. Hit that like button if you want some change to this team. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But with that, thank you, as always, for tuning in this episode of Just Another Year Chicago Bears. My name is Nick Brody, And as always, Bear down, baby.